I spent today at home. I trust that Darius is taking good care of my sock puppet. Now, I must confess, I enjoy taking a break from work. I spent about three hours in my bathtub this morning. Admittingly, when I finally got out of the bathtub, I could barely remember how to walk. But damn, was it relaxing. I didn't really bother with clothes either. I just sat around in my pajamas till noon watching Hell's Kitchen while eating microwave mac and cheese. And yes, I am aware of the irony in that. Then, around four o'clock, my doorbell rang. My lazy ass had not been expecting any visitors, so I called out, Just a second! And then rushed to my bedroom to quickly throw on some clothes a little more socially acceptable. Then I opened the door. I found Carolyn standing outside. She was smiling widely, but the moment she laid eyes on me, her expression changed to one of concern. Jesus, Leah, you look like you just got in a bar fight. Um, that's awful. Your chin, it must hurt, she said. You bet it did, I replied as I moved over to welcome her inside. Well, this is definitely a surprise for sure, I said. Caroline then winked and raised the white plastic bag she was holding in her hand. A pleasant one, though, right? I brought us some snacks. I was hoping that you'd like to hang out a bit, she said, turning her head and adding sheepishly, I feel a bit lonely at times. The only one around Hollywood is Oliver, and I don't like him all that much, she said. I then smiled and told her I would be happy if she stayed. She was elated. The two of us put on a movie and chatted for a couple hours. Caroline had only been at my place once before, and that was just a short visit to bring me my purse, which I had forgotten in the pianist's restaurant. I think I already mentioned that we're not really that close, but today I was definitely confirmed in my assumption of her being a sweetheart of a girl. Of course, the topic of the part came up, and I decided to let her in on everything that I found out looking through Dale's file cabinet and talking to Nathan. I know I have to tell all the others sooner or later, but it just felt right telling her first. After I finished telling her what I found out, Caroline sat and stared for a few seconds. She then exhaled deeply and muttered, Okay, Leah, that might be the saddest thing that I've ever heard, but we're still on to this, right? Maybe there is hope, she asked. I was just in the process of pouring the two of us a glass of cold tea, raising mine to my lips. I waited for her to go on. This reminds me of something I noticed pretty early on about Dale. I've never thought of him as a plain asshole, more like a, like a guy who's got a lot on his plate. If what you are saying is true, Leah... That means he's got a huge burden to carry. It explains his drinking habits and the other stuff too, I guess, she said. What other stuff? I inquired. That he cuts himself. Wait, didn't you know that? She asked. I shook my head no. Uh, you're right. What was I expecting? So, you know how he's always wearing long sleeve shirts? Well... One time, I saw him washing his hands in the bathroom at our break room, and the back of his arm was showing since he had rolled his sleeves up a little bit. There was a really deep cut in it. I remember it looked a bit like the letter E, but that might have been just a trick of the light. It was fresh and scabby. He must have just made it the day before or something. Either way, he noticed me staring and immediately pulled up his sleeve and then left, she said. Caroline then took a sip of her tea. For some reason, I was curious about the cut. It felt very important, like something I should pay attention to. When was this, Caroline? I asked. My friend pondered for a few seconds 
Before answering my question, I'm not sure, Leah. It's definitely been a while, though. I think it was before you started working with us. Why? Do you think it's significant? She asked. I just shrugged. Maybe. It feels like nearly everything could be, I said. Suddenly, a thought crossed my mind. Say, you've been a park employee far longer than I have. Do you, by chance, remember Halloween night in 2016? I asked. Of course. Boy, that sure was something. Dell handed us these music sheets with some really old stupid song on them, and we had exactly one hour to learn the lyrics by heart. Then we had to sing it in a group. I felt so dumb. Do you remember where you sang it? I asked. Yeah, Twin Bell Point, I think. No, I'm sure of it. It was definitely Twin Bell Point, Caroline replied. She was looking a bit confused. And 2015? Do you remember where you were then? I asked. Yeah, Candyland, she replied. You're kidding, I murmured. Okay, get this. Every Halloween is being celebrated in another section of the park, but they're chosen deliberately. The order is Twin Bell Point first, second is Hollywood, third is the horror section, and the year after that, it's Candyland. I mean, I don't know if it actually starts with Twin Bell Point, but the circle does repeat itself. I said, Yeah, but what does it mean? Carolyn asked. I'm not really sure, but it's some sort of ritual, that much I am certain of. Maybe it's just to keep the pretenders in place, or knowing what we know about Dal, for him to choose who gets turned into one, although I doubt that it's him who actually makes the choice, I said. What's that supposed to mean? Carolyn said, sounding a bit unsettled. He was forced to poison Nathan. He said it himself. It's pretty obvious that he didn't want to. Someone else is making these decisions for him, and for some reason he has to obey them. So whatever bargaining chip that they have, it's got to be massive. Remember last Halloween? We all felt like, like something or someone was moving around behind our backs when we were all standing in that circle? Maybe there was an entity that was summoned that night, something that's even further up in the food chain than the non-actors are. And maybe that's what's making the decisions, the thing or the person or whatever that we felt last Halloween. It could have been checking out the merchandise, trying to decide on who gets turned next, I said. Yeah, but we're all fine, Carolyn argued. When Dale had got orders to turn Nathan, he did it right away. I mean, you said that Nathan only noticed the sudden change in his behavior the day before. So, whatever decision that entity makes, Dale has to follow through with it very quickly, Carolyn said. You're right, that's weird, but hey... Maybe it just didn't make a choice last year. Do you know what else confuses me? The other tasks that Dale gave us are all really nonsensual. He only did the seance last year, but before that, there was just a ton of weird stuff. Sure, maybe he wants to keep us from asking too many questions, but come on, even if we did, he doesn't answer them. Plus, we all participate every year anyways, since he pays us extra, so what's the point? I said. Yeah, I don't get it either, Caroline said, leaning back and staring at the ceiling. You know, sometimes when I'm in the park, everything seems to, to try and keep me from doing my job. Do you ever get that feeling? She asked. I shook my head. Caroline then swallowed. Good for you, I guess. What I mean is that on certain days, when I'm a bit late for the question and just try to hurry to the pianist as quickly as possible, everything goes wrong. 
there's crowds of visitors standing in my way. Some folks try and stop me to take a picture with them. I even lost my shoe once, but I've never been late. I always make it just in time, but it's as if the park wants me to fail, like it, like it wants people to die, she said. I then watched as she fiddled with one of the numerous slime rings on her fingers. That's when it occurred to me. It was a matter of low significance, but nonetheless something that I had never noticed before. The main plazas of the four sections of the park form some kind of rudimentary circle. Well, the sections themselves seem to be in no settled formation, nor in any order. The four main plazas within them almost appear to be placed in a way specifically designed to be the fulcrums of a ring. Neither Carolyn nor I could make any sense of this piece of knowledge, but it still struck us as off. We had never thought of it this way. Carolyn and I continued to talk some more until she got on her way home, sometime around nightfall. When she was gone, I started preparing for my return to the park the following day. It took me a while to get everything together, but by the time I was done, I had quite a few things laid out in front of me that I would need. I decided to bring Nathan a change of clothes. I have a pair of men's sweatpants and a couple t-shirts, which I wear when I'm at home. I like how baggy and comfortable they are on me. I took them from my dad's closet when I moved out. I'm not sure if they'll fit Nathan, but it's definitely worth a try. Plus, I found some lotion that works very good on sunburns. Could be useful, right? Something that I did not clarify about the coachman last time is that while he does reek and looks quite tasseled, he is not in need of a shave, nor a nail trim, or anything like that. Not too badly, at least. I think his body must have given up most of its normal functions not too long after he started to turn, just like he doesn't seem to need to eat or drink or defecate anymore. Still, some new clothing won't hurt. I also rounded up whatever candy I had left at home with the aim of giving it to him. At least he'll have something to enjoy. I also decided to stop taking my whip with me wherever I go. I don't want to get too attached to my costume. There might be a higher chance of, well, not being able to slip back out of my role one day. I apologize for this rather uneventful update. I found it very important to share my conversation with Caroline and my reflections about Dale, Halloween, and the other conspicuous characteristics of the park. I feel much better and am ready and eager to continue my investigation. Speaking of which, the other items I gathered are another laurel twig that I got from the lady next door an iron nail in an old silver bracelet.